at which of the five points on the graph are both the derivative of y with respect to x and the second derivative of y with respect to x both negative. So let's think about first this derivative of y with respect to x. So the derivative of a function, remember, is just the rate of change of a function. And graphically, this can be represented as the slope of the function at a given point. So for instance, at this point A, we can draw a tangent line here. And the slope of this tangent line is the derivative of the function, or the rate of change of a function. So if we draw tangent lines at each of these points, we can know, or at least get a rough idea of what the derivative is. Notice at point A, we have a positive slope here. So the derivative is positive. At point B, it's a negative slope, so the derivative is negative. C would be negative. D looks like it's either slightly positive or right around zero. And E would have a positive slope. So we know that the derivative needs to be negative in our question. So points B and C are the only candidates for that. But now let's think about what it means for the second derivative to be negative. And let's look at two separate scenarios. One where we have a curve like this, and one where we have a curve like this. And the second derivative is just the rate of change of the derivative. So in other words, it's how is our slope changing as we move along the curve? Is our slope getting bigger or more positive, or is it becoming smaller or more negative? So when we have a curve like this, notice drawing tangent lines at certain points, we can see how the slope is changing as we move along the curve. And here it's positive, then it's slightly less positive, then it's becoming negative, and now it's even more negative. So we can say that in this first example, that our second derivative, d squared y over dx squared, is negative, since our slope is becoming more and more negative. And in the second case here, again, if we draw tangent lines, we can look at what's happening to our slope as we move along the curve in the positive x direction. And here we can see that it starts as a negative slope and becomes less negative. Here it's becoming positive. And here it's even more positive. So the rate of change of our slope would be a positive number since our slope is increasing here. So our second derivative, we could say in this case, is positive. So now let's apply these ideas to our problems. We know that we're only focused on points B and C. And at point B, notice it's similar to this first case here, where from A to B, the slope of our function is becoming more and more negative. And it's only right around this point around here, which we actually call inflection points. Let me write that down. This is an inflection point. And that's essentially where the second derivative is zero. Or before this, the slope was becoming more and more negative, but here it starts to become more and more positive. Notice we have a negative slope, but then at D, it becomes positive, and at E, it becomes even more positive. So the second derivative at this point B would be a negative number. And since its second derivative is negative, and its first derivative is negative, since the slope is negative, the answer to our question out of which of the five points are both the first and second derivatives negative would be B.